And in this video, we're going to look at how the relationship exists between the acceleration due to gravity and the universal equation of gravity, the universal law of gravity according to Newton. Okay, remember the equation where F is equal to G times M1, M2 divided by the distance between them squared. And we also know that any object, like a person standing on the Earth, will feel a force of gravity, and that force is always equal to MA the mass times acceleration due to gravity. Of course, instead of A, we typically use the letter small g, uh, which indicates that's around 9.8 meters per second squared. So if we set those two equations equal to each other, if we set F, uh, which is equal to, um, let's go ahead and do it like this. Let's take this equation right here, and let's take this equation and put it right here, and we set them equal to each other, so we then have mg, is equal to g times m1, m2 divided by the distance between them squared. Now this here will be m1, let's call this the mass of the person m1, let's call the mass of the earth m2. Um, sometimes it's better to use small m and big m, so I'm going to call this small m, and I'm going to call this big m, that sometimes makes it clearer, so little m times g is equal to g times little m times big m divided by r squared. Now, let's talk about the r squared for a moment. What is that? What is r in this case? Well, actually, r is the distance between the center mass of the one object to the center mass of the other object, and the center mass of a person typically is right around the belly button. So this here would be the distance r. So we'd have to add the radius of the Earth to the distance on the feet to the belly button. Of course, that's such a small distance, we can just ignore it. We could simply say that the radius, the distance between them is simply the radius of the Earth. All right, plug in, uh, let's see, before we do anything else, let's take a look at this equation. We have a small m here and a small m there, so the mass of the person or the object is not relevant here. Well, we can then see that g, the acceleration of the gravity, is simply equal to big G, the mass of the Earth, divided by the distance to the center of the Earth squared. When we plug in the numbers, let's see what we get. So this would be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons meter squared per kilogram squared. Multiply that times the mass of the Earth, 5.98 times 10 <coughs> to the 24th kilogram, divided by the distance between the person and the, uh, the center of the Earth, which is 6,378 kilometers, turn into meters, so it would be 6,378,000 meters, and we square that. Now, notice, how did we know that the mass of the Earth was 5.98 times 10 to 24th? Actually, what they could have done instead is they could have measured little g experimentally. You drop an object, you measure acceleration to gravity, you plug that number in there, and then the only thing that would not be known would be the mass of the Earth. And so you can see that the mass of the Earth was somehow calculated like that. But for now, we want to Ver uh, verify the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth's surface. So let's plug those numbers into our calculator. 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 5.98 e to the 24th divided by 6378000 squared equals, and guess what? It is equal to 9.805 meters per second squared. That's a terrible looking second. Let me try that again here. Okay, seconds squared. There you go. So about 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, of course, it's not an exact constant everywhere on the Earth. If you go to different locations on the Earth, that will be slightly different for various reasons. The Earth is not a perfect sphere, and also because of its rotational motion, there are some effects there that we will talk about later. But at least you can see here that is a very close number to what we normally expect to see, 9.80, 9.81, depending upon where you are on the surface of the Earth, and that's how we figure out the acceleration due to gravity.